Okay. This first one we're going to do is we're going to do this one. Now the thing about um, seashells, if you know, they're all spirals. All right. Um, you can do spirals. You can turn spirals if you want, but they all have, well. You can carve spirals. You, you can lay them out on a lathe, but you have to carve them. So I decided that when I was going to do this, I was going to fake it out and kind of simulate spirals at the top just by doing a series of beads. All right, but it's not. Um, if you take a look at a real shell, these are all grown in spirals. All right, and so. You can't do that. <laughs> I can. I just didn't want to do it in a demo. Uh, <laughs> or for something that we were going to put in a collaboration. You didn't want to make it hard. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do is just standard um, is turn it to a cylinder. Now, I've been using these jaws a lot. There are issues with them because you're out pretty far <coughs> away. But I like these jaws. They're smaller than. Um, uh, a regular uh, number two set of jaws on there um, and it fits on this kind of wood pretty well uh, but you could normally just do it between centers and then uh, do a tenon on one end and mount it on a regular chuck. Sycamore. So I'm actually going to turn it like this uh, because I want to get this nice long taper on this side um, rather than try and do it over here and uh, then I'll turn the beads. Um, obviously this piece is smaller.
to do this. I'm going to move that out just a hair more. a little starter spot for doing the hollowing. So I'm just going to do a little drilling in here. Whoop. Oh my gosh, I think I even brought my So that just gives me a little place um, where I can start carving on it. And uh, just so not absolutely pretty, it looks like a Christmas tree on top, but <laughs> um, you can start working on this by taking, you can use a Dremel if you have the right bits for it, okay? Or you can use a Fordham or Weecher. And I'm just gonna use two burrs. They're just double cut steel burrs. It's just a matter of going in and hollowing out a space like this. It, it takes a little while. It takes a really long while if you've got no electricity. <laughs> trying to get in here. Um, one of the things that you want to do on this is you want to keep this thing coming down. And in, in actuality, this, this really goes all the way down to the bottom, okay? And then you just 
clean it out and give yourself a little semblance of, uh, you know, an inside of a, a shell. Now you can you can do as much as you want. You could sit here and do a lot more on this. Um, obviously, you could do a lot more on this. There's another. Uh, if you just have a Dremel, um, there's another set of bits that you can use with a Dremel that'll work as well. And those are these little cutsalls. Okay, they'll they'll go in here as well and and take that out, and uh, they work pretty well. Uh, these get filled up pretty quick. So you need to keep cleaning them. You can burn them to clean them. Um, or the other thing is if you have a brass brush, brass wire brush, you can r run it against that brass brush and it'll get that, that cleaned out, okay? So I'm not gonna really do any more than this. You can see it's, it's you know five minutes worth of work. Just do a nice taper, sand a little bit, do a series of beads, um, trying to uh, get that the shape isn't a round hole. It, it is shaped kind of like this. So you want one edge. You figure out, oh, where is that snail going to come out of? And that's got to be a nice smooth uh, entrance. And there's one side that's a little flatter than the other. So OK, just give that a try. And if you like me to use your skew to trunk bees with, you'll have a true spiral like you Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I know. It's been doing some problems. Is there any way that will come back? I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, yeah, another one that you can do, another kind of uh, shell, is a sand dollar. Let's see. So, one of the things, if you look at a sand dollar, sand dollar isn't truly round. But if you look on the internet enough, you'll find a pattern that is. <laughs> All right. So, um, I got these. They're they're really perfectly round. Um, in fact, I I have some other wood that's cut exactly to these sizes. Um, and, and all you do is you take this and adjust the sizes of what you're uh, oh, here they are. Uh, on your printer. You just adjust it. And then I'll, I take a compass and I measure uh, what size these are. I get this so I adjust it so that the compass does the same circle. And then I'll mark a circle on, on the piece of wood. And I'll use that center mark. I'll use a center punch and drill a little Forstner, use a Forstner bit. And that'll give me a, um, a, a, a way to mount this. So you have to have kind of small jaws for this, all right? And, uh, pin jaws or these kind of jaws work fine, all right? In fact, I think I'm going to use the, the bigger one. It'll be a little easier to see. All right, so basically now all you're going to do is turn a little bowl back side. So I want to true it up. All right, and I don't want to take too much off. I want to just round it up. Because once I, I band sawed it and I didn't get them perfectly round, but I, I did get them pretty close to the diameter of those. Because what I got to do next is once I turn the profile here, I'm going to transfer that image onto here, and then that gives me where to cut. And uh, 
I didn't bring my pyrography, to, uh, my wood burner today, but that's how you do, you burn some of them and you uh, carve some of the other ones. All right, so now it's just a matter of uh, doing a nice gentle dish profile. pretty um, round and flat. I'll just stand it up a bit. have a nice smooth surface, a little bit of a dish. You, you know that it's pretty close to that size. Well, this is a little bigger. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll end up, oh, this one here. Right, and then I'll just transfer that on in a minute. But the first thing I want to do before I do the transfer is I want to part this off. Now if you have a thicker piece of wood, you can use this to make a whole series of them, okay? Or at least this would make two, all right? So, get my parting tool. sure that this is pretty well lined up. Okay. When I cut it, I left a little tab here so I have something for my fingers to hang on to. Um, this is xylene. Xylon. I didn't pour it out before because you will be fumigated a little bit. And is that printed out with a laser printer? Yes, with a laser printer. It has to be a laser printer. It can't be a um, inkjet. Inkjet won't do it. Now, normally with these things, um, you take it apart and you put the or you pull the nib out and you pour the the um, xylene in and all of that. What I find with that though is the xylene evaporates very quickly and all of that and what I'm doing for a small part like this is just as easy to just let it sit in there a second and it'll soak up um, enough of the xylene and then what you do is you'll just take that xylene pen 
and you'll go over the image. All right, and I'm going to take and I'm going to rub this with the edge of a credit card. Ben Fo says the higher the credit card limit, the better the cash transfer. Ended that credit card. No, they actually work great. I mean, I have, I save all of the ones that come in the mail and all that stuff. I got a whole stack of them. I save my hotel room keys. Okay. Woodcraft gift cards work. <laughs> you got any out? You know, we're just full of comedians tonight. That's what you're pretty good at. Ed, do you need a special pen to apply this in? Um, yeah, it's, this is, oh, blending pen. Blending pen, yeah. And, and is all it is, it, it comes empty, it just comes without any, any ink or anything in it, and it is, it's, this one happens to be two-ended, but I never use this end. And all it is, it's a wick. It's a, yeah, it wicks it out, and um, it's just got a chisel end on it, all right? But Hobby there's, Lobby or? Yeah, I got this in Michaels, but or Hobby Lobby Michaels or whatever. And, and it's called Landed? Blending. 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 It's made for blending colors in art. Right. But some of them come with a chemical in it, Right. But it won't work. Right. So you have to get the one that's <clears throat> empty. All right. Or you let the other one dry. Uh, yes. Because I couldn't find that when I was looking for it. Okay. So, and I, I, I didn't do a very good job getting it on center here. See. <laughs> so here's what I'm. What I would do to this. I would take this whole area, and I'll burn it. All right. This inside. I'll I'll burn that. Um, I'll, I'll do a little shading because it's got a boulder outside uh, and then a very light inside. And if you look at a, a real uh, sand dollar, they've got little striations running from that center out to the outside. So you can just use a very fine, um, you know, not a stippling, a, 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 a skew tip on your wood burner and just touch it back and forth. And that gives you this the star and then it gives you this inside and then a little bit of that texturing there. Now for these, they're real slots. And so what I do in that case, is I'll, I use a Dremel for this. Do many of you have a Dremel with a flex shaft? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, one of the things for me that the, was the best add-on for this is this. It's a chuck. Yeah. So instead of using um, what it comes with, this will take from eighth inch to three thirty seconds to sixteenth. Yeah. So you can use all those different kind of bits in here. The other thing I would suggest is making friends with your dentist. <coughs> because uh, once I told my dentist that I use some of these uh, kind of carving tools, every time I go in he has a bag for me that's been autoclaved and all of that, and they're only allowed to use them once, so. What does autoclaved mean? That they've been steam sterilized. Oh. Doesn't have any teeth on them. <laughs> <laughs> but you can also get, you get their fix. Um, some of them have yeah. the sanding in on the pit. All kinds of cool stuff he does. And syringes for, for using adhesives and oils and things. <clears throat> yeah, we got a bunch of different bits that you get on the part of the supply.
takes almost no time. You get yourself a little slot in there and you can you just go through and, and do the other two slots, sand them out a little bit, okay, or you can do a little bit of um, do a little bit of texturing around the edge. And then you can just go around and do the other two. So that's all you do in a case like this. Um, you'll, you'll take the back and you can um, use a, the grinder on here or use on uh, the Dremel. You can use a little um, That's, this is why I really love the chucks. That was a three thirty seconds. I can just open it up to an eighth. And so this is a quarter inch sanding drum. All right. If you didn't get it lined up the way you wanted, you can just sand it off and do it again. All right. So when I make, when I print these out, even if I'm making just a couple, I'll make a whole page full, make them different sizes, you know. Um, and it's pretty straightforward then to, to get them all matched up. So that was real quick. So those two were made with just, I don't know if time, maybe I'll do some other things here. Um, so those were just two done without having to do anything too elaborate. Um, the only thing with this is you, I, for me, I, I drill a hole with a, with a Forstner bit so I can mount in expansion mode on this chuck and real easy to deal with. The first one, we just mounted right directly on the chuck. This next one is a little bit, um, a little bit harder to simulate the the real look of the of the uh, snail shell. So again, it's one of those things where you have to fake things out a little bit. 
And what I'm going to do this time is do, can you hand me the one next to the, the grapefruit? Or, uh, that, one? that one right there, yep. Is that called an olive? Yeah, it is exactly what it's called. Yeah. The man. Yeah, yeah, so this is a, um, as Sam said, is an, the olive. Now normally this one also has a little spirally effect to it. Again, I didn't want to take the time to do all of that for something like this. So all I really wanted to do in this case was turn this round. So once again, I'm just going to do what I did before. So what I want to do at this end is taper that a little bit nicer, um, open up that hole just a little bit. this end. So I'm just going to sand it just to here.
Okay. Now, the one thing I got to do, I've got to do that's a little bit trickier on this is I've got to fake out that. Think about it, this is supposed to be a series of spirals inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a line across here. And that's going to be the entrance to the shell. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my Dremel and switch bits again. I'm going to go back to that same kind of bit I was using first to cut the, um, the slots in the sand dollars. I thought it was in here. Let's get another one on. And uh, what I use for these are mainly little ball tips. Um, yeah, I'll use this one. <laughs> well, you know, I buy them too. I have a bunch that I get from from Treeline. Yeah. I don't know. I just I'm cheap like that. <laughs> I well, like. I got, I'll never run out of them. Yeah. <clears throat> and I figure he can afford to give me something. Okay. So here I'm going to use I'm going to use this line. I'm going to follow this line. Try and go in at an angle so I come into the top of that hole. All right?
instead of doing it the whole way with the Dremel at home, I got a pretty deep cut all the way, and then I took a, uh, a back saw and put it in the vise with the teeth up, and then just ran it back and forth and, and cut it most of the way, and that straightened it back out. Okay, I'm halfway done. I've got I've gotten it from about here over cut. So that's one part, but I still have the other side. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I didn't break anything. Is I'm gonna cut off this piece. I like to do that when I have some support. Because the rest of it I got off new holding it in my hand. Alright. So I have a little nib on this end. Now you can, if the gods are with you, um, you can certainly make one of these each time. You can see that. So I've got the hole drilled and I've got a cut. Now let's pretend that the cut comes all the way across. All right? So I have it down to this one side. So and I've got a, a circle in it and I've kind of got it cut like this. All right? The next thing I have to do in on this is this actually actually comes like this. All right. So you have to make this undercut it a little bit because it's not like it comes out of that real skinny slot, you know. <laughs> so again, you just use a, a Dremel. And I was using a, one of the sanding um, drums. You can use a bigger one than this. Uh, bigger the quarter inch one, but you can also use a half inch one for this. And then, because the the cut is coming into the top here, I want to take it off to the bottom here. Okay. 
So I'm rubbing this edge up here up against the upper lip. And then I'm just tapering it down. And then I'll come back and I'll just whoa. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I'll come back and just do a little bit of relief up here because snails don't have any really hard edges. Okay. And then I'll take sandpaper and run it up. And actually, I don't think I... Well, maybe I did bring it. Yes, I did. Or you can take one of these mini rasps and get that in there and, and start... When you do this, you, you have the ability to really straighten up whatever line you cut, you know, with the, with the Dremel tool. If that little ball tip one wasn't very straight, um, once you start going in with the with the rest you can straighten up that cut pretty good and help with your your undercutting you ever use one of those little diamond nail files yeah I but I've they cut pretty good the ones that I've used they take they take really a little they buff it more than they cut but maybe it's just they the ones that I'm using it makes them aggressive ones too yeah because they come in different colors and yeah, they're not that expensive. No, no. I and and you know where this comes from. This is the flute. I <coughs> use this to do the rough shaping, and then I use the diamond files to do the final shaping of the truth sound hole and everything. So anyway, you kind of get the idea of of what's going on here. Um, You do a little bit more shaping underneath. Do a little bit more sanding. <coughs> and this one, an olive, has a lot of, of uh, surface coloration and um, you can do a lot of detail work on it. All right, so that gives you an idea of, sorry. That gives you an idea of how to do something, uh, do an olive like that. All right. Now the next two are been a long time since I've seen. The next two are pretty different. All right. The next one, next two take some some prep, and what you end up doing with these is you t you get a square piece. A square piece of wood. And how do I know this is square? Well, I run it on my jointer to square up two sides, and then I plane it. So I'll, I'll run the piece, long piece, you don't want to do a short piece like this through a planer. But you run a long piece through the planer and then just rotate it 90 degrees and do it again. And that gives you a square piece. All right? And this is your core. Then I'm going to take whatever thickness you want to do, all right, in this case it's about a half an inch, and so what I've done is I've taken a, made a long strip of this, planed this to a uniform thickness, and then what I'll do is I'll take some newspaper, cut it the same width as the wood, I'll glue it on here, and I'll glue it on all four sides, put the glue on here, stick this down, put the glue on here, stick it on here all right and I'll do that all for take paper put it all the way around and then put these all the way around all right let it sit overnight um, to be honest I'm not so critical that you know when you start clamping these up and things want to slide this isn't a permanent glue-up job this is just a glue-up job that when I turn so 
Sometimes I'll put a rubber band around it. Sometimes I'll just let it go. But I will set them like this on the table. So if I do them like this, these two outside ones are going to want to tend to fall a little bit. So I set them like that on the table and let them sit overnight. So this is what you end up with. So what I'm going to make now are those little clamshells that are, have their mouth open. All right? And these you can take to the next level too. I mean, I did not do them, but when I was, um, you can hollow out the inside if you want. All right. So what I did, um, I did put that the square piece between centers. I really marked out as carefully as I could. I really, because I don't want these to run out of true. So I really did work on trying to get everything lined up right in the center. All right, and I turned a tenon. So now I'm ready to go. Okay, I want to see, you know, can I get it as square as I can? Can you turn the inside and outside like this? I can't turn the inside. I would I would sand or carve the inside. do, these are pretty thick, but what I want to do is get this edge down almost to the core, all right? So I got quite a bit more to do. The better you've done the glue ups, the better the more square it is, the more uniform it is. Okay, that's pretty close. Just a few more. there because you can smell the camphor, which is what the core is made of. And then on this one. Yeah. Okay. So now I've got four pieces. So this is going to make two clamps. Four, four pieces of shell. Um, and what I want to do in this case is I want to turn a shape um, something kind of like this, all right? Because what that'll do is it'll get me down to the edge all the way around. It gives me a place on the bottom um, that's a little pointed that can be Depends on when you when you look at it. Do I like it with the pointed end front or the pointed end in the as the hinge or whatever? <laughs> so I'm almost here, almost. 
not too much more to go. So all you're doing here is basically turning a big bead. All right? Did you use camphor on purpose? So no, that's <laughs> what I had. But I liked it. I, I like turning camphor. <laughs> And it certainly was an indicator of when I was into the day. Okay? So, that's, you can see right here that the tops of these have come right down to the, to the core, and now I've got to turn the back side. See there, I've cleared that on all the sides. So um, all I'm going to do is sand them a little. So these I used regular typing paper. It hangs on a little tighter <laughs> than does newsprint. All right. But now you've got you've got four pieces, and you start playing around. And you say which ones really work well together. <coughs> so those match up really good. These, with a little sanding, these will match up pretty good. And again, the better that you do the original layout, and the better they are. But now, the issue is, of course, you got the paper on the back. So how do you deal with that? Well, there may be lots of fancy ways to do it, but... You can't hold it. You know, it's just a little disc. <coughs> Different 
bring your standard device? Just um, you still can't hold them. Okay. Because you, you, this comes right down to an yeah. edge like yeah. that. Just yeah. Yeah. Basically a hinge. So that when I glue them, super glue them together, they their the mouths are open just a little bit. So if you glue them together, they're going to be, it's going to be like that, all right? Now this, because these aren't exactly the same size, I'd probably sit there and sand around the edges some and get them exactly the, the same, okay? But then with that little relief in there, it isn't very hard to just hold that together and they'll be open like those other ones are. All right. So if you wanted to, to make that into sort of a shape shell on the outside, you could texture the outside. Absolutely. Okay. You, could, um, you could do this kind of in a scallopy shape, mm -hmm. all right, and then put the lines in going right. this way, you know. So whatever you think about doing, you know. But you can see by, by doing it that way, first of all, you get two for one, which is pretty cool, I think. <laughs> And then the second thing is that um, um, because they've been done um, on a, a core like that, it's very quick to get a nice, thin, disky shape, you know? Um, and, and two for one is pretty good. The other thing, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't have time to really do this, but I'll just show you that you can take this one step more. All right? So this one, no, this is not shells. This is going to be, this is going to be the sawgrass. All right? Now, the way I did it the first time, when I did it at home the first time, I did it like this. I glued the pieces together. I glued a thin piece, a little thinner piece, 
And another piece, this size, it was exactly the same as this size here. All right? These two are the same. Let me make that a little bit more graphically correct. All right? This was the core. And I only had it on two sides. So when you look at it from the end, it, it looked like that. All right? Is that different? <laughs> yeah, this is, well, this is the long way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Smarty Pants. Um, so anyway, when I turned this round, okay, what am I left with but those two pieces if there, if you can control their thickness by controlling this, okay, that thickness, all right? The thicker I make this, the thinner those actually get, you know, and, and that, so you can control it. Now, when I started playing around with these um, clam shapes on a core like this, I thought, well, why not try it like this? So, in the few minutes I have remaining, I'm just going to turn this end. Now, I've prepared this exactly the same way, all right? There is a, uh, the, the, the way I did the last one, all right? So what I have is a core. Now we're looking on the end. There's a layer of paper. Do you stand the other side? Yeah. Thanks. There's a layer of paper on all four sides, the whole length. And then I've, I've glued four pieces of wood onto there with the idea that if I, again, if I turn this round, okay, I'll get four, four slugrass leaves. But this is just like any long, I mean, some of them I did at home were this long, you know, so it's like any long spindle, you got to be careful and... You'll get a lot of support at the two ends, but it'll definitely want to vibrate as you get to the middle. You see it starting to form here, all right? And I just got to keep on turning until I get it, that little black line, which is the newsprint, that gives me the shape of the leaf up. Take a little bit more off the end. Okay, we're running out of time. But as you get, as you can see, as I work this back, all right, I'll, be, I'll basically have a little sliver of wood that goes on all four edges, and I'll just do the exact same thing I did with the X-Acto knife, and I'll pop that off, and then what I'll have out of that is four leaves. Now those leaves will be straight. They'll, um, they'll, have, they'll be tapered at this end, I'll taper them a little bit at that end, and they'll be the full width kind of in the center but straight leaves aren't too interesting. So what I've done, 
I've taken a Erlex um, steam generator, which you can get here. Um, it's a just and I made a steam box. All right. So I take these off. I put them in the steam box. Hook up the Erlex to it. Wait about half an hour. I've created some um, forms at home that kind of look like this. All right. I take this end, hook it here, and then just bend it and put a couple of clamps across it and let it sit overnight. That's all there is to it. Um, because these are thin and they're, um, uh, they're pretty flexible, if you've steamed them for half an hour or so, that um, you can make this shape um, without having to have a mating form. A lot of times if I'm doing bending, I'll have actually a two-piece form and then I'll clamp them together. But you don't need it with this. This is thin enough that you don't really need that. All right. The other thing that I've done is sometimes I've done this, made this smaller, mounted it, so now it's like this, and then I'll take it and I'll twist this leaf 90 degrees and clamp it down to the table that way, and so now you've got a bend in it and a twist in it. All right? So you can do a lot of things like that, but because this is uh, thin and and, and uh, light and it's very flexible after it's been in the steamer. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Any particular kind of wood you use? Um, I'm probably using one of the worst woods in this case, um, but I'm using it because it's white and we still haven't talked about whether we're going to add a little color. One of the things for this I was thinking about doing was just uh, with an airbrush applying just a little bit of green dye along the outside edge, which is kind of what they look like as they're drying a little bit. Um, and so it's maple, which isn't really known for its bending properties. I mean, ash, is the ash and oak are great. Um, cherry isn't even too bad, but maple isn't so great. But I'm not doing anything really strenuous. I'm just bending a little bit, and it's thin. so. And you just let it dry overnight, and the next morning you got a bent piece of uh, grass. All right, that's it. So uh, all I really want you to do for next time is either come Saturday or work on doing something for the collaboration and bring it to the next uh, the next meeting. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.